Hi, and welcome to today's Engaging for Missouri webinar. I'm Alice Roach from the Division of Applied Social Sciences at the University of Missouri, and I'll be your host today. With each of these 30-minute webinars, we intend to share research-based insights that leaders like you can apply in your own work to benefit and strengthen the state's agriculture and food system, hospitality sector, and communities. Today, Alan Spell will present an update on the state of Missouri's economy. Before I invite him to begin, I want to share a few housekeeping items. First, we'll close the webinar today with a question and answer session. Those of you who connected today via your computer may submit your questions in the chat screen. So to open the chat screen, just click the chat icon that you see at the bottom of your Zoom window. If you join today by phone, then you may email me your questions at roacham.missouri.edu. Second, all attendees are muted and may not start their video. Third, if you encounter any technical problems during the webinar today, then please let me know by submitting a comment in the chat screen or you can also send me an email at roacham at missouri.edu and I'll do my best to help you troubleshoot. Last, we will make a recording of today's webinar available. You can look for an email from Zoom that shares more about where you can access that recording sometime tomorrow. You can also find an archive of all of our previous Engaging for Missouri webinars on our Division of Applied Social Sciences YouTube channel. So with that, we'll transition to the topic of today's webinar, which is titled Missouri Economy Indicators, Updates on the State of Our State's Recovery. Presenting is Alan Spell, an assistant extension professor who works with our Exceed Regional Economic and Entrepreneurial Development Extension Program. So thank you, Alan, for presenting today. If you could please unmute your microphone and start your video, then we can begin today's presentation. All right, thank you, Alice, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, as you know, if you've been to some of my presentations before, I throw a lot of uh, data and charts at you in a short amount of time, but rest assured you'll be able to get a copy of this after the presentation is done. We also have some interactive stuff here, so there'll be some polls um, as we go through here, just a couple. So we'll start with that first poll here, which is a question about your feelings about the recovery of our job market. So when we, uh, in April 2020 had the uh, depth of our job losses. Uh, a year later, 2021 in April, what do you think our recovery of jobs will be? More than 90%, 70 to 90%, 50 to 70%, or less than 50% recovery? So you take a few seconds here and make a choice here and we'll see what you say. All right, so 70 to 90% recovered, 50 over half of you. So optimistic, that's good. Well, what do the numbers show us? Let's dive into that. We're gonna talk about the economy. We're gonna talk about consumer behavior, uh, how workers are doing and how the job market um, is doing and also businesses as well. So we've got a lot to cover here in about 20 minutes. Uh, I'll try to move uh, quickly through here. So the U.S. economy has rebounded some um, since uh, this, uh, the, the, the earlier part of the spring and then the summer as we grew. The vaccine hopes are, are certainly fueling the stock market. Um, having vaccines available in, the, in 2021 is uh, giving our stock markets a, a big boost. The GDP decline for this year is estimated to be about uh, 3 to 4%. That is better than what uh, economists were thinking in the summer months when it was estimated to be a decline of six to 7%. And a lot of that has to do with the uh, hopes of the vaccine coming in, in, um, uh, in 2021. For 2021, the increase in GDP is expected to be around three to 4%. And that's a combination of different sources. The Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development just came out with estimates yesterday. You can see that chart to the right. Uh, that um, was revised from the knowledge of the vaccine. But we also have some you know, estimates from other, uh, from other polls as well. So what does that mean? Well, typically the U.S. has been uh, seeing real GDP growth of around two to two and a half percent over this past decade. Missouri, uh, a little bit slower than that, but the last couple of years was over 2%, 2.1%, I think was the last reading from 2018-19. So Missouri generally follows the trends of the US, sometimes a little bit less in terms of growth, but basically what this means is that by the end of next year, the hope is that we would be back 
to where we were pre-pandemic as a, as a country. So one of the things that we are doing over this past uh, few months here at the University of Missouri through Extension and the Exceed program is doing economic indicators every two weeks around topics that are uh, impacted by COVID. Uh, we started in March, our first uh, March 23rd indicator brief of a couple of pages of, of the material. And our last one came out earlier this week of small business openings and revenue, which we'll cover here today. But we'll have another one out in a couple of weeks and, uh, and follow that um, in early January with another one. So we'll keep going. Uh, if you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll be um, kept up to date when those things are produced. So how are consumers behaving? Well, there's a number of sources out there, especially during uh, this summer and fall, we've seen a lot of private sector data vendors come out with information. I'll just caution ahead of time that this stuff is, is volatile. It um, comes from different sources and different types of information. So we wanna look for a lot of these different uh, real-time data points and see if they're, talk, if they're leading us to understand the trends. Understanding that any one given point can, can lead us astray if we're only looking at that. But some of these sources are, are cited a lot, used um, by a lot of uh, groups to understand the economy. So I feel pretty good about some of the information they're showing. Household spending, uh, we did a brief a couple of weeks ago about that, uh, that was up um, to early November. Well, the data keeps uh, being advanced. Household spending for Missouri is about 5% below what it was in January, seasonally adjusted. That's lower than the US, uh, which is at 2.8% according to this data source by mid-November. Now, as you can see from that chart to the left, blue is for Missouri. Through most of the pandemic, Missouri's household spending has been higher than the U.S. Uh, level, and it really uh, started to decline in October uh, as the U.S. Did, did as well around the, um, the same time that the COVID uh, cases started to rise. And those COVID cases have kind of peaked uh, in mid-November and they're starting to come down, but they're still very elevated. And of course, we worry about that um, in the coming uh, months. To the right is that chart with retail and restaurant and hotel spending also on there for Missouri. So we see the 5.1% decline for the whole state of Missouri, but retail is 8.5% up and uh, restaurants and hotel are 30% below in terms of spending. So it's volatile, but it has ticked up a little bit since mid-November. When we look at foot traffic, there's another uh, real-time gauge that we can look at how consumers are behaving. And we see that uh, foot traffic for Missouri is 13% below the same levels in 2019. The table over to the right shows the different categories. We see that actually in home improvement, it's up. Foot traffic is up. Think about your Home Depots, your Lowe's, your hardware stores. And we see some other indicators that I'll show you later around spending um, and building supplies that has been elevated. So uh, we see people going more and more to those places. Grocery stores, about the same, medical centers. And then we go down to the bottom, hotels, shopping centers, dining, um, significantly lower foot traffic. We also see, and another point of, of reference, because we like to have multiple points of reference if we can, the Missouri Department of Transportation puts out information around traffic counts. And uh, this is a chart from their uh, seven day moving average of passenger and commercial traffic. And we see passenger traffic about 10% down, I'm sorry, 12% down right now but it's kind of been uh, pretty level through most of the summer months. Commercial traffic has kind of hovered around the same levels as last year and is up a little bit um, in November. And a lot of that's probably, some of, some of that's probably related to stores stocking up for the holiday season and so forth. Now, another uh, reference point uh, today in, in um, one of the papers, the, uh, show, they showed information around Occupancy rates in some of the largest metros in the country, in the 10 largest metros, the average occupancy rate for commercial properties was 18% versus January, when it was 100%. So that means about 18 or one in, one in five office spaces are, are being used right now in these big cities. Just another indicator that people are working from home in most of these larger metros, probably similar situations in St. Louis and Kansas City as well. Now we'll talk a little bit about online shopping because even though we're, we're 
going physically to places less, uh, we're still spending. Um, we have money. Uh, we're not spending on services. We're spending on goods. And we're uh, spending a lot online. So the declines that we saw in early November in, and in, in traffic, in-person traffic and spending related to these COVID health concerns um, are there. But we're also uh, turning to, um, to online stores, the Amazons, the Walmarts of the world, spending money there. In 2020, second quarter, the e-commerce part of retail sales went up to 16%, which that, that chart over to the right shows you. So as you can see from 2016 upward, we were climbing in e-commerce of eight to 10 to 12%. Well, in just one quarter's time, we went up to 16%. So big spike in e-commerce. Some other related data in October for the US non-store retail, so that's your e-commerce was up 29%. Uh, in sales versus last year, compared to 8.5% for retail as a whole. Black Friday, the interest of us, a lot of us uh, did some shopping uh, this past weekend during the Thanksgiving holiday break. Foot traffic estimates are that uh, foot traffic was down by half. Uh, the National Retail Federation came out today and said their, their estimate was down 37% in terms of foot traffic over, that, over the holidays. But online sales were up 22%, according to one estimate and from Adobe Analytics. So, so again, we're shifting to those online sales. Now that matters long term, and we'll look at some other data points here in a minute. But you know, 44 to 48% of Missouri small businesses do not use online platforms for sales. And so that's something that um, as we're as an economy and as consumers we're changing to more online uh, uh, type of activities. That's something that we want to look at. Th those numbers are, are, uh, are same for the U.S. So Missouri is about in the same company as the U.S. Uh, but anyways, it's just a, an interesting note. And that comes from the Census Small Business Fault Survey. Now, one of the questions that we're, we're asking ourselves is, of these new habits that we're, you were doing over the last few months, which ones are going to stick after the, the COVID pandemic? Well, the McKinsey uh, Company did a survey in October. Of, of consumers and asked about these behaviors and which ones that they thought were, were, would uh, stay after the pandemic. And uh, I've highlighted in gold some of those patterns. In-store self-checkout is going to continue. And we've seen um, grocery stores already shifting to that. And we could see that happening uh, at, at, at different types of stores. Purchase of pre-owned online um, uh, goods is likely to continue on. So we're more comfortable buying used goods online. Also using store and restaurant apps, buying online for in-store pickup, and then purchasing directly from social media. So we're just getting more and more comfortable with this. And those are habits that are likely to stay. So now we'll shift to, to workers and how they're doing. So the first thing we're going to look at is continuing claims, unemployment insurance claims for the state of Missouri. Uh, the chart below shows you continuing claims um, up until uh, November here. This is not seasonally adjusted, but these claims are um, a good indicator of, of, of how uh, you know, the, the unemployed are doing in Missouri in terms of what the overall trends are. I've included all the way back to the Great Recession, 2008, 2009 time period, just so you have a reference there, that we, uh, that we saw obviously in April and March timeframe, unemployment claims really shot up uh, significantly, but they also dropped significantly. So we went really higher than, than what things were back in the Great Recession, uh, much higher levels, but then we shot back down to much lower um, levels, still elevated, but lower levels, um, again, because of the economy recovering. We're in this unique situation, right? Where we've lost a lot of jobs, but we're gaining some back um, um, quickly. And we'll touch on that a little bit more here in a minute. The initial claims, weekly initial claims for Missouri uh, has been trending lower, but in the last couple of weeks, it did uh, have an uptick. So, so that's something to watch as well. Missouri unemployment rates are down obviously significantly since April when they were at 10%, over 10%. Now they're at uh, half of that, 4.6%. The US is at 69 And the, the map to the right shows you October's um, 
seasonally, not, not seasonally adjusted unemployment rates uh, by county. Now, this is monthly data, gets revised. So these are preliminary estimates. And uh, you know, I think one of the, the overall stories I will, that I want to take away from this is 4.6% is, is, is a fairly low rate of unemployment uh, you know, in terms of, of how we think about the economy um, in general. But I think what's, what's missing here is that a lot of people have just left the labor force. And so whenever we, we take a gauge of unemployment, we're saying, are you actively looking for work? And uh, sometimes, obviously, uh, that's not the case. And with the pandemic, that has obviously altered our traditional patterns. So while we're low, that's a good sign. It's also uh, artificially lower than what it probably would be because people have just left the, the labor force. Now, in September, the, the Missouri Department of Labor and Industrial Relations shows that about 80,000 people were on unemployment insurance. And the top three industries for those people were accommodations and food services, so your hotels and restaurants, followed by healthcare, followed by administrative support. And a lot of administrative support is going to be your temp employment agencies, uh, and so that's going to be where those are going to hit. Now, an interesting um, thing as well is 54% of those unemployed in September were women. Now, for context, in 2019, in the labor force, about 49% of the labor force was, was, were, were women. And for the unemployed in 2019, on average, 51% of the unemployed were women. So women were a little bit more likely to be unemployed than men, even in 2019, but that was 51%. In September, it was 54%. So uh, we've heard the term C recession uh, uh, put to this um, uh, recession that we're in. It definitely seems like in Missouri, uh, women are seeing more of the impact as well. And that, that data, uh, you know, is there, but also surveys and McKinsey and company did a survey this summer of people that, uh, that workers, and if you had children, were you more likely to uh, adjust your work based on that? And mothers were more likely than men in almost all those categories, in all those categories actually, to either reduce work hours switch to a less demanding job, take a leave of absence, or leave the workforce altogether. So women were more likely. Uh, and in the past recessions, men, and especially the Great Recession, were more likely to be uh, unemployed. The Great Recession really hit construction hard, manufacturing, where more men were there. And this recession, women, um, especially in April, I think women were about 3% more likely to be unemployed than men. That gap is tightened in November, or I'm sorry, in October. It's uh, Women are still more likely to be unemployed, but but a lot closer to men now. But still, what, what we're seeing is that women are more likely to take care of children at home and are more likely to shift uh, to, to not work to take care of, of their kids. Now, we'll turn to employment and those gains that I talked about earlier. We dropped off significantly in April and March, uh, but we've regained about 63% of those jobs back. So. So big, um, you know, downward slope of jobs in the early part of the spring, but we're about half, we're over halfway back. Um, and as we go into October, you can see that chart to the right. Uh, in, in September, October, those gains have started to slow. So we, we gained back some of those jobs in accommodations and restaurants that we could gain back quickly, but those uh, gains are starting to slow now. October job change from a year ago. I picked really from a year ago. There's monthly changes that we can see, but I really, uh, because data is so volatile, I like to really look at over the year changes a lot of times. And we're still down 4% from where we were in October of 2019, loss of 120,000 jobs. But over that year's time now, we see that some, I've selected some of our larger employing industries. We see construction is actually up 8% in October over the year. Manufacturing still down almost 5%. And you can see some of these others. Uh, leisure and hospitality, which is your restaurants and hotels, mostly restaurants in that category. Employment's down by 17%. Uh, so we still see a, a lot of industries being impacted severely. So now we'll turn to businesses in general and how they're doing. So one of the real-time sources that we have access to is uh, data from Wampley, which shows us credit card transactions and also uses that data to understand if businesses are open or closed. As of 
the early part of November, about three out of four Missouri small businesses were open, according to those estimates. That chart to the right there shows you total 75% of businesses were open, and then it shows you a difference by retail, transportation, healthcare, leisure, hospitality, and so forth. Leisure and hospitality at 64% open. Um, Again, these are increases from where we obviously were in April and, and uh, we, we come up quite a bit from that time. However, uh, we had a three month average of around 79% of businesses open. That started to decline in early November, again, with those increases in COVID concerns, so down to 75%. When we look at uh, surrounding states, we're at a higher level than um, Kansas at 71% and Illinois at 61% or 65%, and nationally that number was 71%. Another thing we wanna look at is revenue. And so uh, we looked at small business revenue and I cut the data by metro and non-metro areas from this Wampley information. Uh, again, this is only for open businesses. So that's a really important caveat. This is not for all businesses, only for open businesses. Uh, the change in revenue, average revenue, from uh, the first two weeks in November compared to the first two weeks in uh, November of 2019. We see that in metro areas and non-metro, sports and hobby retail is up. Building supply and home services, especially up in metro areas. And look at that compared to vehicle sales and service down there, um, lower in metro areas, up um, some in non-metro. And I think the building supply and home services up in metro versus vehicle sales, also includes gas uh, sales is down in metros, probably an indication that the remote work is uh, causing us to spend more on our houses. People are moving out more to suburban locations. Um, I think uh, uh, St. Charles had some of the highest numbers of, of, of um, single housing permits uh, recently. So we see people buying low mortgage rates right now. They're buying outside in the suburbs, planning to to work remotely. So I think that might be some indication there of that. Um, then we look down at arts and entertainment and uh, lodging hotels, uh, very much lower than past uh, in 2019. So one data point right there to look at. Now we'll turn specifically to a couple of sectors, big sectors that we, we talk a lot about. One is manufacturing. And how is manufacturing doing in Missouri? Well, uh, Employment-wise, we're still down 5% from a year earlier. Uh, transportation equipment, so think of Boeing and your, your automotive plants and your boat manufacturing down the Springfield area is down 7% uh, in terms of employment. Uh, food manufacturing is down less at 2%. The, uh, the indicator that a lot of times we look at with manufacturing is the purchasing managers index. Uh, it was um, an It's an indicator kind of, of the outlook of manufacturing in the coming months and what supply managers think is gonna happen. Looks at things like inventory, new sales, employment. An index number above 50 is an expansionary um, outlook. Below 50 is a indicator of contracting economy. In Missouri in October, that index was 78, which was really high. You can see the US level at 59. So really a good sign for Missouri. Just yesterday, um, that number was updated to uh, November, which was 75.6% for Missouri, so a little bit lower, but still a very good sign that manufacturing um, is, is, um, is something that is uh, looking up and looking optimistic. So I'm gonna try to move on quickly here so we have some, some time here to wrap this up. But restaurants um, are down in employment. You can see dine-in uh, down 65% from January, so that's um, much lower. We are doing carry-out and, and online orders, but dine-in is substantially lower. Tourism, the Missouri Division of Tourism does a great monthly indicator and it has some information around tourism and how that has declined, and you can see that as well. Uh, quickly, I wanna talk about the uh, startups. We see business applications increasing um, significantly, uh, 8.6% percent more than in 2019, which is interesting. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about that more in Q&A uh, and how that's and what's causing that. Uh, looking ahead, we see that the health concerns are obviously impacting consumer spending. Uh, online sales are benefiting. 
I think long term, we see obviously that switch to more e-commerce, demand for broadband is going to pick up. Uh, we're going to see more remote work. Uh, we're going to see less travel demand with that as well. The automation and tech advances that we're seeing have been accelerated, and those are going to stick probably. And what that means is that large companies with those uh, efficiencies can be the winners in this. And we see that in the Amazons and the Walmarts and so forth, they're going to have those solutions. However, that startup activity gives us hope that there's uh, some tech savvy companies out there starting to, to create jobs in, in companies with these new um, e-commerce trends. What does that do? Well, it, it almost always disadvantages low skilled workers in the short term and sometimes long term. And so that can be a, an impact. So last poll question, and then we'll talk, talk uh, have a discussion time here. But if we could do one of these things, which action do you think would be most beneficial to our economy here uh, to uh, benefit our economy, assuming funding wasn't constrained? So take a moment, take your best guess at what you think would have the most benefit to our economy. This is just for me to really kind of see how, how people are thinking here, but I really think this is sometimes some interesting uh, insights and in how we think about what might improve our economy. So. Broadband, 50% broadband, all right. And then followed by applied training and uh, generous grants. All right, interesting, okay. Well, with that, uh, that wraps up my uh, presentation. Now I can take, take a few uh, questions. And so thank you. Alice, I'm sorry I went over my time. Um, <laughs> no uh, worries, you, Alan. <laughs> we do still have a few moments for questions. And one of our attendee questions, Alan, is referring to the unemployment claims data that you showed. So if you could skip back to that slide so we can see the long term, okay. perhaps. Um, the question specific to what, what causes the spike that we see in unemployment each January? Is it at all tied to temporary workers that are employed through the holidays? Yes. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, this is not seasonally adjusted. And so um, what the Bureau does is adjust it for those types of things. And so we see, we see different changes at the end of the school year, for example, um, and then at the end of holiday seasons. And so that's exactly right. We're using, sometimes we have to go to seasonally unadjusted though to get some details um, of, of information. So you'll see in some of my data sources, I switch from seasonally to non-seasonally just because I can get some additional details. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and you kind of prompted this whenever you were speaking, but um, we see this increase in new business applications, but the Fed says that it's not tied to unemployment or telework. So why are we seeing that increase in new business applications in Missouri and throughout the U.S.? Yeah, so it is interesting. And, and I, the, the, re, the research is linked there. Uh, so the, the economist at the Kansas City Fed thought, well, maybe it's because of high unemployment that we're, you know, when typically in a recession when you're laid off, you're a construction worker, you're, you're employed at a firm, their business dries up, you go off and you start your own business. It makes a lot of sense. And then a lot of times that's what happens. But when um, the economist looked at high unemployment places, uh, he, didn't see a, he didn't see a correlation there necessarily. Uh, of course, we're still in the middle of this, so noise, day, day's a little noisy, but he didn't see a clear pattern there. And also the idea that places where people could telework more likely, maybe they're turning and starting businesses, he did not see a connection um, there as well. What, um, what might be going on here is a couple of things. One, it could be that construction worker who is now saying, okay, now that my firm laid me off, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, my new business uh, doing um, work at home because guess what? A lot of people need work on their homes right now to to help have a home office or something like that. So a lot of it could be that. And construction industries, a lot of times are some of the early starters after recessions of cranking up new businesses. The other thing might be that some people who are employed at places and they have specialized skills. So think of a hairstylist. You were working at a firm um, at a company uh, cutting hair. That company closed. But now you can take your business to those customers. And so you can actually go to their house and cut their hair. So maybe that's some of it as well. Other things might be just people who are more savvy with the online world and understand, for example, we're buying things more 
use now. Etsy, you know, is, is taking mm -hmm. off. People are buying things. So it could just be people starting those type of things as well. So that's, it's an, it's an, it is an interesting pattern and one that gives us a little bit of optimism there. Great. We have time for one more question and it's from a viewer. How can we bring back hospitality businesses? Uh, I think a lot of that is, well, there's two things. One, um, the, 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 the vaccine is obviously key to this and consumer confidence. As we can see, people, uh, people respond to the COVID. They're responding to the situation, the health concerns with that. Um, and, and so without a vaccine, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be hard. Um, but also, as we can see in, in things like the movie industry and, and the thing in places where uh, they can automate, they can use apps, they can use things to um, you know, uh, move your viewing of movies, for example, to online versus um, in theaters. Uh, you know, those are, there are some technological things you can do. Um, I have a feeling once the vaccines are out there, people are gonna be very eager to get back to, to doing some of the things they do, dining in, in restaurants, going to Silver Dollar City, going to shows and stuff. So I have a, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll see a rebound in that. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alan, for sharing today's presentation and taking some of our questions. And thank you to our audience for joining us. When you edit Zoom, you'll see a post webinar survey will load in your browser. If you would please consider responding, we'll use your feedback to improve the webinar experience and also brainstorm future webinar topics. Again, you should receive a recorded copy of today's webinar via your email within about a day from now. So we're back for our next Engaging for Missouri webinar next Wednesday, December 9th. At that time, our division's Bruce Fowler will share a presentation titled Farm Financial Benchmarking in Missouri. So again, thanks so much for joining us and have a great Wednesday. Thank you, Alan. Thank you.